Standard deviations play a critical role in statistics, telling us how varied data is from the average. And here I have a normal distribution with a mean at 0 and a standard deviation of maybe 1. doesn't really matter. The point is what counts. So we'll have our, if we just want to be very specific, we have the x-axis, we have the y-axis, and this normal distribution here is what, in this case, looks to be just a regular bell curve. And there's a fact about standard deviations. There's a fact that if you go one standard deviation away from the mean, so the mean is, in this case, just the y-axis at x equals, sorry, yes, at x equals zero. If you go one standard deviation away from the mean, so, uh, well, if you go half a standard deviation away in either direction, and encompass one standard deviation of data, so if this is a distance here of one, how much of your data will be within one standard deviation of the mean? So what fraction of the total is this green area here? Well, one standard deviation, written as lowercase sigma, one standard deviation contains about 68% of your data. 68%. What if we went another standard deviation? So what if we now just double distance, so we contain exactly two standard deviations of data. So now we're not just looking at these two bars here, we are, but we're also looking at the area in between that we were before. So we're adding on to the 68%, we're encompassing the entire area between this line, the far out lines, so two standard deviations. Well, in two standard deviations of data, you're containing about 95 percent of your data and if we just repeat this process one more time if we go out one more standard deviation so we're adding on this new piece of data I'll do it in orange with all of this data everything between this line and this line we are now three standard deviations and we're containing about 99 percent of your data and these are actually infinitely expanding decimals so we don't we, we wouldn't be able to write them down all as one but it's an interesting question to ask where do these numbers come from they're very accepted and well known but how could we define them and it actually takes a turn to calculus to define them and the basic idea is if you have one standard deviation of your bell curve, of your normal distribution of your data, you can say the fraction of your data that is in there, so the fraction of the area, is equal to the area of the bell curve within your region, so area within, and you're gonna, as always, just divide this by total area. So if you divide the area within your segment, so if we're looking at the final three sigma here, the three standard deviations, 99%. If you take all of this orange, and I'm just going to go over it extra heavily so we won't be seeing so much of the uh, magenta and the green, take all of this orange area, and you divide it by the total area of the bell curve, so adding on these little strips here that we haven't actually accounted for yet, this fraction would equal about 99%. That's what we're saying. And from a previous video, we know that the total area in a bell curve, total area, is going to be equal to, and this might be, seem counterintuitive, maybe beautiful, and I've actually made a video on why it's true, the total area under the bell curve is the square root of pi. And if you don't know why this is true, I'd encourage you to go and watch that video. It's very interesting and very uh, interesting elegant example of why sometimes converting into polar when you have polar coordinates when you have functions of multiple variables can be a good idea and can simplify a problem. Right, you can go check that out if you feel like it. The area under the bell curve in total is the square root of pi and the fraction, the fraction, so the area within, is the integral from negative x where x is your standard deviations, right? So negative x to positive x of e to the negative x squared 
dx. And if we felt like rewriting this, because the bell curve is symmetric around the uh, its center, the y-axis in this case, we could say this is 2 times the integral over half of that segment, half of that interval, so from only 0 to x of e to the negative x squared dx. And so if we divide these, then we, what we get is that the fraction at any point is equal to 2 divided by the square root of i times the integral from 0 to x of e to the negative x squared dx. e to the negative x squared is the equation for the bell curve, and 2 to multiply for taking only half of the interval, which could become useful if you're trying to approximate this, it mean half the computation, and dividing by the square root of pi to normalize it, dividing by the total area. So this is actually a really useful function in mathematics. It is useful enough that mathematicians gave it its own name, and it is this is one of the most fun names to say in math. This function is called the erf function, the erf of x. Just try saying that if you want. Pause the video. Erf, erf, erf. It's very funny. This equals 2 divided by square root of pi times the integral from 0 to x of e to the negative x squared dx. It's just what we have up here. It is the fraction of data that is within your normal distribution going out x here. And erf, for those who want to know, stands for error function. This is the error function, erf of x. And it makes a little bit of sense why this might be these numbers here, the fraction of data contained within uh, n standard deviations would be this nonlinear function, is because it involves this integral of the bell curve, which is a definitely nonlinear function, very hard to quantify, definitely not, uh, you wouldn't be able to do it with elementary functions. So you have these numbers that we can only really approximate. And uh, just before I show you actually how to approximate them, or if you wanted to, I'll, I'll, I'm going to show you a program that I wrote to approximate them. I just want to say that in order to actually get these, you need to uh, plug in a slightly different value into the ERF function. So if you want these sigmas that are uh, telling you how much of your data is contained within a certain number of standard deviations from your mean, you want to say the ERF, the error function of how many standard deviations. So let's say you wanted two standard deviations, but it's so x standard deviations. And you divide that by the square root of 2. And then this value right here is all of these numbers here. These numbers come out of the, this function. So the error function of 3, so the error function of 3 divided by the square root of 2 is 0 0.99, and then infinite decimal places. So now I'm going to switch off of my drawing program here and switch over to a little program I made that just shows you how, in theory, you might program something like the error function to approximate it. So I have here some code that I wrote to uh, approximate the error function with a Riemann sum. So you have the Riemann sum. And again, if you if you don't need to understand programming to understand what I'm doing here, but if you know programming, it might be interesting. This is in JavaScript. And so you see this i divided by the square root of 2. The i is running through different values and printing them all out, so we get lots of different values of the earth function that the computer is calculating for us. This i is equivalent to x, so we are dividing x by the square root of 2 to get the fraction of data within the standard deviations. And you can see in the actual definition of the earth function, you have the 2 divided by the math dot square root of pi, so the square root of pi, and then multiplying by a Riemann sum function that I programmed up here. And for those who know code, you can just recognize this as adding up all of the rectangles and then multiplying them all that height by the width to get the area. So if we run this, what do we get? Well, you click on the log here. You see all these different numbers. So we have ones that we are familiar with, like ERF of 1.0 is 0 0.6827. That's the area uh, or the fraction of data within one standard deviation. You have ERF of 2.0 here 
which is fraction of data within two standard deviations, 0 0.95, 95%. Within three standard deviations is 0 0.9973. So you have all of these different ERF values that we know, but how much data is within 1.3 standard deviations of your mean? 80.64%. So if you want a little list, here it is, and uh, you can program it for yourself if you feel like it, but that is the ERF function, and hopefully that helps you understand a little bit better why you have these maybe hard to pin down numbers for how much data is within a certain number of standard deviations of your mean in a normal distribution.